talk about something a lot of fun. Basically, it is currency through the ages, right? And basically, we're going to start at the very beginning and go up to present day. So I hope you all are ready. Let's get started. So, originally there was no currency, right? There was no paper money, no coins, nothing. Basically, if you wanted a man's horse, right, you trade him something. So, let's say back then I really wanted wheat, right? And in return, I had a wild rabbit that I had caught and skinned. And I had extra. So I would trade this rabbit for wheat. Now sometimes the trade would go through, right? because it was something that both parties needed. But other times, it would be like trying to trade a horse for a cat, right? The man didn't want a cat, and the horse is by far more useful. So, ah, sorry guys, that's my cat. Bo, what are you doing? Anyways, so, moving on. That was stage one. Stage one was trading. So stage two, is when coins came in. And basically, they found precious metals, right? And instead of making headpieces, headdresses, large pieces of jewelry like you saw in like Egypt and India, they made them into coins. So you had your Byzantine Empire coins, which was simply, it would have their monarch stamped on the front, and then on the tail side it would have the emblem of the empire. So a lot of like Roman coins have their Caesars on them and then they have the Roman emblem on the back. Now from there you had basically like a diversity, right? You went from just one coin for everything to this coin for this much, this coin for that much, and so on and so forth you got to the colonial days, which is when you had coins that only ran a certain number of years. Like, say, the three cent nickel, right? Basically, it was a small piece of silver about that big or so. Smaller than a dime. And it was worth three cents. But, the interesting thing, the reason why it's failed, is because it was made out of silver, right? So it was worth more to melt down than it was as a coin. Then you have some that stuck around, such as penny, the nickel, the quarter, and the dime. Now, an interesting fact, just on a side note, because I love coins and I collect coins, Originally, all of the coins were smooth-sided, right? They didn't have the reading. And basically, the reason that the government added the reading onto the sides was because people would get silver coins, scrape a bit off of each of the edges, melt that down, and sell it, but the coin itself still looked like it was a whole coin. So basically, to stop people from cheating, what they would do is they added reading, so if the reading was tampered with, then the coin was invalid and no longer able to be used. It was only worth smelt value. And then eventually they stopped using silver altogether. They stopped using silver and golden coins and moved on to copper and nickel and such things. Then, from there you went to stage three, which was your banking and paper money. And basically, they went from precious metal coins and somewhat precious metal, like nickel and copper. From there, they went to a piece of paper that the government said had value. 
and this was known as paper currency. They made it mostly just because precious metals are hard to find, for one, and two, carrying around pieces of paper was much easier than carrying around blocks of metal or coin purses that could get very heavy and it was easier to steal for pickpockets. So, from paper money, they went on to plastic, as you know it. And basically, from there, they went to stage four, which is online. So such as Amazon, for instance. A lot of people do their shopping on Amazon, Etsy, eBay. And basically all this is, is it's entries on a database. So it's, like for example, if I buy something on Amazon, right, the database for my account says that I owe, like, I have $10 less. Where there is a matching transaction in Amazon's database that says that Amazon is $10 more. There's no paper, there's no metal, there's no trading, it's just an entry in a database. Then from there, we moved on to stage five, which is where you enter into online and virtual currency. You no longer need physical banks. You no longer need physical currency. You move on to what is known as cryptocurrency. And basically, that's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum. There's so many different cryptocurrencies. It's ridiculous, truly. But all that is, is just, like I said, it's virtual. It's just a database that says you have X amount. A lot of people think that it's the way of the future and that we're going to eventually just completely shift to online and virtual currencies. Now you can argue that we will, and you can argue that we won't. I honestly... A lot of people think that cryptocurrency is dangerous because something as small as a computer crash could make you lose everything. And that's not true. I don't particularly care for cryptocurrency, but it's a lot safer than most physical banks are because well you know what I'll just save this for another video I'll do a whole video on cryptocurrency but that's pretty much it I'll see you next time bye hey guys congratulations on making a video so as you know I am your financial gardener right and these are the beds that we are going to be planting your financial seeds so like subscribe and I'll see you next time